Good evening to you. How is everyone this Friday evening? I hope you're doing well. And I just want to say right off the top of my head, right off the bat, welcome to all of the new subscribers who are just coming by for the first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to see you all. And thank you, everyone who has subscribed over the week. And I mean the week, guys. We have jumped up like 50 subs in in the last week or something insane like that uh it's quite frankly just pretty darn amazing and i am humbled and i am honored um you know to to just take a look at this uh yeah 1547 subs and since uh since this time last week um that's from 1490 guys that's from 1490 57 subscribers in a week that is huge hello bill allen we will be playing some gamma world tonight greetings gen x geek oh gosh who's out there damien um pelinor dungeon minister anchorite wave of mutilation um just just welcome everybody welcome and um Boy, today got crazy. I, I've never done two full-length topical videos. I don't mean full-length, like my live stream level of full-length. Uh, um, hello, Light Main. Good to see you, too. You snuck in there. Um, like, like two topical videos. Things were developing that quickly today and they continue to develop there there's stuff that's going on i may do videos this weekend all right it's it's that crazy and and guys look i know the cynical attitude might be that i'm just jumping in this to to uh you know to, to, to kick up views to get to, to you know to, to get that that sweet sweet clickbait um Guys, what's going on impacts old school, all right? Now, look, if you just play, if you're just like, I have a player's handbook, a dungeon master's guide, and a monster manual that were printed in between 1977 and 1979, and a stack of modules, some graph paper, pencil, dice, and three friends, I don't care. I get it, all right? I promise I get it. But there are a lot of us, and I include myself in those ranks, who are trying, who are striving to keep it relevant, to make cool stuff that you can still go out and buy and play with your classic AD&D today. And what wants he's gotten up to affects that. I mean, they did the hit piece. And now they're releasing, uh, you know, the, they had their statement, the OGL 2.0, with some rather pointed language in it. TJ greets. Yes, it is Gamma World Night. So from where this long, white-haired grognard is sitting, um, there's a lot going on that affects us. Unicycle Peon greets Robert Phillips. Howdy. Tunka Todd, hello. Yes, I go by God's time zone. Thank you very much, Tunka. Greeting, Safi. I see you over there. Um, so I, I, I don't feel like there's... I, 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 I don't I don't feel like there's this great rift between, you know, me just disasterbating with what's going on and... Um, and, and talking to you guys about old school D&D. &D. But, but I'm going to say this. We swim through negativity, but what powers our limbs is positivity. It's positive energy. It is positive force that moves us forward so we can get out of it, so that we, we can move through it and get on with ourselves. And I see the Viking hat has snuck into the green room so i'm gonna i'm gonna bring kyle on here in just a few minutes he he was johnny on the spot with the breaking news this morning um but no we do positive things around here so don't think that i'm just gonna jump in with a tim pool-esque foil hat rant about you know how uh 
the Illuminati and the Biden administration are, are, are putting fifth edition into our water supply. Okay. We're not, we're not going down that road. Um, so what we're going to do between now and nine o'clock, uh, my time, I, the next hour, the top of the next hour, or maybe a little bit after, depending is I have four six sided dice in my hand. I am going to roll those dice six times. I'm going to discard the lowest die. And ladies and gentlemen, because someone asked me about this on social media, they said, hey, do you have a video? Do you have a live stream where you make a character? And I could honestly not remember. I think so, but I think it was very like chatty, exemplary kind, kind of thing. We're going to do that before we play Gamma World tonight. We're going to make up a character tonight using the four die six, discard lowest, arrange to taste, and we're going to see what we get. And I got a camera set up over there. So you guys are going to see what I've got going on the tabletop. And we're going to bring in my co host from down under, the one, the only, Mr. Kyle Shuant. Kyle, this is an. Groovy treat. How are you, my friend? All right. I'm not sure how well this will work. My headphones are still rooted, but <laughs> we'll try anyway. All right. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a shot. I'm good. I'm good. I was very amused to see uh, their little back down on D&D uh, &D Beyond. Um, and uh, as I said to Bill, I particularly liked the um, line where they said, um, it will also not include the license back provision that some people we're afraid was a means for us to steal work. That thought never crossed our minds. <laughs> we have internal communications from Watsi. This is that thought absolutely crossed their minds. That thought <laughs> crossed their minds back and forth to the point where their minds were just permeated with we're going well, to if you, take you've got stuff. a document if you've got a document that you paid lawyers to write, even if you had Saul Goodman write it. The thought crossed their mind. You know, the, they put it there for a reason. Every word was there for a reason. Even if you're not a lawyer, you might be a rules lawyer. Every word you put in the rules is there for a reason. That's right. Every word is there for a reason. I read the Dungeon Master's Guide forward and backwards. <laughs> I know rules. I know what you guys are up to. But I just okay. had this. I had this mental image of the thief in Conan the Destroyer, the one who always channeled the Peter Lorre voice, you know. What? What have I done? I did nothing wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, oh, what oh, what was that character's name now? I've gone blank. Um, no, was it was Super Top from Barbarian. Akira was... Something up. Uh, yeah, something like that. Akira was the wizard. Somebody look that up for us, and you get the shout out if you'll put it in chat for me. Um, oh, and speaking of shout outs, I guess I should probably. They, I mean, they don't need to be named. The wizard had no name in the first movie, and you only ever found out Valeria's name because she was in the credits. Her name was never spoken during the first movie. <laughs> that's very true. Well, what, what is that? That's a good. See, people thought I was being sarcastic on Twitter the other day when I said. Um, when a, when a guy said, uh, human fighter, that's all the character background I need. <laughs> and, uh, and somebody said, Oh no, but you know, you also, it's fair enough to have other things and blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, we don't even need to know your name until you survive the first combat encounter. <laughs> Maybe not even after then. <laughs> well, last week, did you cast, uh, for those of you who caught last week's Gamma World game, um, uh, we had a T Presence from the Discord is, is in our Gamma World game, and he made up a character, mutations and everything, walked right out, stepped into quick grass, was killed, roll up another character. <laughs> he literally said, hey, I'll journey with you guys, glob. <laughs> <laughs> went straight down. So if you if you guys saw that, uh, Damien gets the shout out. It was Malak, Malak the Thief from Conan the Destroyer. Uh, we meet him when he is swallowing gemstones. Um, uh, well, yeah, I mean, and even after their first combat encounter, they don't necessarily need a name because, as I said, uh, two of the four members of the adventuring party, so to speak, in Conan the Barbarian, were never named during the movie. 
but they still strike us very strong. We, we remember their characters pretty well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't, and, and we know nothing of their background. What did the wizard do before he came to the, the mounds? What did Valeria do before she came to, you know, before she found them beneath the tower? She was obviously the player who arrived late at the session. Exactly. Uh, you meet them at the foot of the serpent cult tower. Okay, cool. Yeah, where you were also going to rob. <laughs> yes, uh, that that was the tower you were going to rob, and now the the fighter and the thief are also there. Okay, so uh, what do you do? Well, what do you do? And they say, "Oh, you know, you're not guards, and neither are you." And uh, yeah, new player, very good at improvising. She says, "Do you know what horrors lie beyond within that tower?" And the fighter yeah. says, "No." And the new player, not being stupid, says, well, then you go first. You go first, exactly. <laughs> and, and, of course, the guy who arrived really late because he scheduled himself for a second shift, the dimwit, plays the magic user, and we don't meet him till way later. Yeah, and, I mean, because he did the second shift, he keeps passing out of the game table. That's why he never leaves his, uh, <laughs> never leaves his little, never leaves hey. the party camp. What 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 about Mako? He's asleep again. Uh, he's staying at his hut near the mounds. You guys are going to the Mountain of Power. Mako is staying at his hut near the mounds. So yeah, that's that that's exactly how it all it all pans out. You know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, going back to the the other side and says. One. Hey, dude, I haven't done anything. Like, I know magic users only use daggers, but I mean, what is a spear but just a a, a staff with a dagger on the end? And I can use both of those. Fine, fine, fine. Just don't fall asleep next week. <laughs> and um, then he gets level zero fighting man in the back and has his moment. <laughs> you know, so going that, back to the uh, D and D Beyond guys, they had their little their little tweet where they released it and you know, did their full press release thing. And uh, they said, oh, it's just because we want gaming to be really inclusive and stuff. And it's like, what? So you're saying it hasn't been so far? Yeah. There's, this idea of, there's this idea that corporate and government heads have, which is natural because that's the job they do, that any change, positive or negative, can only come from the top. It can't, can't come from anything that us commoners do. It must come from the top. Yeah. Um, if people are bad, it's because they were badly led. If they were, if they're good, it's because they're well led. But my thing is, like, black and white people happily mixed with each other long before a civil rights act. Right? They just formalized things. There were gay couples. It's not like there was a lack of gay couples hooking up together before same sex was legalized. You know, it should have been legalized and all that. But it, it wasn't a lack of, of gay hookups before then. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly and living together in all the rest. So right. the, the real positive social change comes from the individuals doing it. it, it people like ourselves just being nice to one another. And that happens long before and even in spite of what some dickhead in an office thinks. So, and you know, I, I think I think the perfect contrast between What's being pushed today and how it started is at the end of the OD and D rules, it basically says, Why should we tell you how to have fun? Versus we are going to tell you how to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of having fun, Kyle, are you ready to generate a character, my friend? Well, you're doing it wrong. You've got four dice there. I'm sorry, Kyle, you're breaking up. Let me let me kick you out of the, the call and you try to come back in when your audio gets right. <laughs> See, uh, Kyle's an Old Testament kind of guy. I'm the New Testament. Um, all right, so let's see here. Let me, let me see if the tabletop is going to come in. And that, that looks good. Okay, all right. So here we go. Kyle, Kyle will get this for veracity. Just grin and just pretend, Kyle. Just pretend like you like it. We're Orthodox Reformed, okay? <laughs> Not a bad start. 
Oh, that's that's uh, way, way, way out there. It's still not all there, dang it. Well, there. it's because the screen has room for three dice, but not for four. Yes. <laughs> Quiet, you. All right, so we've got uh, four, five, and six. So we have a 15. That's our first one. Somebody make note. We have a 15. And a 14. We are in Fuego. 15 and 14. Yeah, that, that one's probably to Kyle's liking. That's a that's a nine. That's a, that, that is that is Kyle Shuant perfect there. So that's three rolls. You got 15, 14, and nine. Here we go. And another nine, 15, 14, nine, nine. At two more rolls, guys. If you're hoping for a paladin. Pray hard. Fifteen, fourteen, nine, nine, ten. One more, guys. Fifteen, fourteen, nine, nine, ten, seventeen. Well, that's a pretty good set of stats. I mean, you might even be able to paladin that just down the line without even rearranging them. No, because the wisdom's got to be higher than that. So let's see. Let's see. 15, 14, 9, 9, 10. The 10 was a 12. Did I miscount? Okay, so. All right, 15, 14, 9, 9, 12, 17. Kyle, what are you going to do with this set of stats? Me? Nothing. That's not how I roll, man. Stupid thing. Hang on. Sorry about that. That's not how you roll. You're not going to do anything with that. No, no. Ah. Uh, okay, Kyle. Sorry. Hypothetically, if you did, what would you do with those rolls? Oh, I would. Uh, I would munchkin out. I did that once. Um, I did that once in a game. I think. Uh, what was his name? A British bloke. Um. Anyway, when British bloke was running it. Uh, and I had a carry. I just put the I put that in decks, put it in strength and decks, and um, so I did the two handed weapon, the two handed weapon thing, munchkined out. It was great when I got to higher levels. So three attacks every two rounds became. Oh, we'll just round it off because it couldn't. It wasn't going to be six attacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Four attacks, <laughs> or whatever. So um, three attacks every two rounds just it became like three attacks every round it was it was just mincing away it was so munchkin -y. it was hilarious you were a cuisine art so let's see character classes do it i just want to know if we have can can we can we go paladin here otherwise i'll leave it up to the audience i'll just wait to see what the majority says unless somebody wants to i don't know throw in a super chat and decide for us. The Paladin, a strength not less than 12, a minimum intelligence of 9, a wisdom of 13 or more, a minimum constitution, and not less than 17 charisma. Can we do that? Well, let's see. If we throw the strength, 15, and one of the 9s in int, And the 14 in Wisdom. And the 9 in Con.
and we can put the 12 index. Actually, I'm going to put the 12 in con and the 9 index because we have no we have no minimum for dex. And then, of course, our 17 goes into goes into uh, into charisma. We can do it. So we have a first level paladin. So Kyle, why don't you do a 3d6 real quick? Do you have some dice to hand? Let me ask you that. I'll just use the um, I'll just use the uh, dragon's foot generator. It's even quicker. All right. And then, then you can see everything. All right. So present. Our paladin starts off with six hit points. So um, yeah, so dragon's foot um, offers a one uh, E character generation, and uh, because gaming is all about choices, it offers you the choice of how you do it. So you've got um, the choice of uh, three dice, the best three of four, best three of six, best three of four plus five bonus points. Um, so I'll just go re-roll. And then here we go. This is what I get. So he's got strength 11, intelligence 13, wisdom 9, dex 8, constitution 11, uh, charisma 8. Uh, with strength 11, intelligence 13, uh, he would qualify for either um, fighter or magic user. Uh, does 8 dex allow him to be a, a fighter? I think it just can't be below 5. I can't remember. Let's check. We'll just check the, the rules. Dex. No, there's no minimum dex for a um, fighter. It just says at five, here or lower, the character can only be a cleric. So he can be a clumsy but strong fighter if you want. So he could be either a fighter or a magic user. Well, let's make him a, a magic user. And uh, a guy, human, magic user, alignment, probably neutral evil. He's a magic user. No. Um, neutral, right? And uh, this this one helpfully gives you the saving throws and that. Um, and it rolled up the hit points for me too. Three hit points. There we go. So with this guy... All I have to do is um, buy his starting equipment with his 30 gold, and he's good to go. 30 gold? That's pretty brutal. Oh, well. Uh, okay, so the gear starts on page 36. What would we give him? So well, I mean, a, a, a robe, a staff, and some basic equipment, right? I have uh, I have a player's handbook. Why don't, we, uh, why don't I share the player's handbook out real quick? Give me just a second here. Um, gonna that horrible, horrible day when it occurred to me that that two monitors wasn't enough. <laughs> horrible day when it occurred. All right, I'll just do this real quick. Staff doesn't even appear on the, the equipment list. Must be free then. <laughs> it's a stick. <laughs> How much gold does a stick cost? <laughs> well, I always assumed the staff as a weapon were reinforced in some way, but. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Or possess the hardest wood or whatever. <laughs> Okay, so I'm taking over for a second. So we can look at the equipment table for your magic yep. user. Uh, so let's see. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Equipping the character. All right, Kyle. We're equipping your character. Yep. I think you got shafted by the Dragon's Foot uh, character generator. So um, uh, 30 gold's plenty. <laughs> I'm sure I can hire one man at arms with 30 gold. <laughs> Even if he's in leather armor and there you go. I just need one guy to hold them off long enough while I run away. 
<laughs> Some of you may die, but that's a risk that Kyle's character is willing to take. Well, he is a magic user after all. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, so you've got your coin. Um, I would think you'd have clothes. You didn't just wander into the village nude. <laughs> well, I was just thinking how um, <laughs> when I was when I, um, when I was I don't know a teenager or something, and uh, the GM he ruled that you just started off with uh, your coin purse and a loincloth. You didn't even have sandals. You just walked into the shop. <laughs> <laughs> little bag of coin. And I said, the coin purse. Oh, okay. So it's a little leather thing. That'll be useful as a pouch Oops. later on. Well, no, he said, it's just like a little scrap of cloth that you've, you've twisted into a knot at the top. <laughs> uh, Kanek, I, I asked uh, Kyle to, to, throw, to roll up a character real quick. So uh, that's how we got there. Um, there's a question. How did we get from Paladin to Magic User? All right. So, um, what, what do you want, Kyle? We're going shopping. This is like on the, uh, the old wheel of fortune when the people would win and they would spend their money on the prize. Uh, uh, you want any herbs? You want any livestock? <laughs> you can buy garlic and a chicken. Cool. All right, so a staff, a staff that will be actually be under weapons. Yeah, but it's not listed. <laughs> it's son of a gun. It isn't listed, is it? <laughs> Never has been listed. Uh, but I've always figured it can't be more expensive than a spear. So you you know you look at the the cost of a like a dagger and scabbard is two gold and a spear is one gold. So I, I always figured that. Um, a, uh, a staff is half that, half a gold. Yeah, like five silver pieces. Hmm. Um, and so he gets a staff. He gets a, a leather backpack. Okay. So um, that is uh, a leather backpack is a, a whopping two gold pieces now. Yeah, and he gets... Um, oh, what race is he, Kyle? What race is he? Human, of course. No, um, of course. And he um, he gets 50 foot of rope. Okay, that's four silver. He gets 10 iron spikes. Uh, that is 10 copper. Yeah, and uh, he gets three torches. Three copper. He gets three flasks of oil. Whatever will you need those for? That is three gold pieces of spendthrift. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and uh, let's see. Uh, and then he hires a man at arm. Uh, well, then he can need some food, I guess, when he travels. <laughs> Uh, do you want, do you want uh, iron rations or standard rations? Standard rations. All right. There's three gold. Yep. And then he hires a man at arms. Okay. Whom he equips in um, leather armor. Gets himself a, uh, a leather armor, a small oh. shield, and a spear. And then he's ready to go. All right. Setting you back a total of six gold pieces. Does that leave you with anything in the bank? Oh, I don't know. I, I haven't been uh, keeping exact track of it, but it'd be less than 10 gold. Yeah. All right. Well, let's check your starting spells. Don't worry, folks. Time permitting, we will come back to the Paladin. But let's check your starting spells. Okay. I'll, I'll do my... Uh, you know. Google's got a wonderful thing. You just type into the Google search bar, roll 1d10, and it comes up. So the first, so he's got read, he'll have read magic. The first roll is seven. Okay. The second is right. 10. And the third is five. Seven, 10, five. Let's see. So that's in the, dun for those who don't know, that's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. 
on the starting spells. Yes, we Not are. The players should be looking at the Dungeon Master's Guide. But... No, indeed. All right, so our offensive spell, seven, is push. Mm -hmm. And you get to choose. You, your defensive spell, you may choose which spell you can choose. Affect normal fires, dancing lights, feather fall, hold portal, jump, protection from evil, shield, spider climb, or ventriloquism. Spider climb. Spider climb it is. And the last one was five, correct? Yeah. Oh, a potent spell for a first level magic user. You, my friend, have identify. Yeah, all you need is 100 GP pearl every time it's cut. 100 GP pearl and a live carp to swallow. <laughs> I always wonder if, um, you know, because if you've got, you need a low fantasy campaign, because if you've got a, a lot of magic users running around, the 100 GP pearls would soon become worth 200 GP. <laughs> there could be a market for them. That's that's very true. You know, in a, in a world where there's a magic user on, on every street corner, suddenly those 100 GP pearls start to appreciate in value a little bit, yeah? <laughs> All right. Uh, my paladin needs no such, uh, such considerations, so let's see. As a fighter or a fighting class, uh, he starts off with the easily generated sum of 5d4 uh, times 10 gold pieces. 5d4 times 10. Let's see if I can... Uh, let's see. And that nets us 15, 150 gold pieces. In which I will go for, uh, let's do some, we'll do a small helmet and chain mail and a small shield. So that's uh, 95. A sword and scabbard. Uh, let's just, we got we got to go with the standard, the long sword. So that's fifteen. That's one hundred and ten. So we've got forty gold pieces left to spend. And I think we'll rock the uh, the leather backpack, um, a bullseye lantern, a few pints of oil. But I am definitely going to save enough for guess what? A man at arms who is wearing leather <laughs> armor has a small wooden shield and a spear. So we now have a party of four adventurers with a little bit of healing magic. And that bonus from standing near me with the protection from evil will be even better. So you see, Kyle, we can form a nice front in front of your squishy magic user. It's good. It's good. Fighting men to my left and my right. My backpack is easily accessible if you'd have to reach in there to grab another flask of oil to toss. What spell will you memorize before we go adventuring? We're not going adventuring tonight, guys. <laughs> uh, probably spider climb. Spider climb. Good call. Climb on the ceiling and drop oil on them like a <laughs> B-52 bomber. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, burns the monsters like he can. <laughs> So there you have it, folks. It's just that easy. Now, if you're curious, if you're wondering, hey, tell me a little bit more about, for example, you know, what, what the Paladin in first edition AD&D can do. You know, that's, that's an easy look. We just pop over there. Uh, detect evil up to 60 foot distant as desired, but only when I'm concentrating on determining the presence of evil. Make all saving throws at plus two. Immunity to all forms of disease. The ability to lay hands on to heal two hit points of damage per level of experience of Paladin. So I initially can heal someone for two points. So we get a little bit of healing going on there. The ability to cure disease of any sort. Uh, levels one to five. That's one time a week. 
So Bob got wounded and Jim got tetanus and our magic user Kyle is okay. Well, we're all good. And the emanation of a protection from evil spell in a one inch. That's 10 feet, not that far from him, but it's actually 10 feet, which in the standard dungeon environment will easily cover myself and the two hired lads to our left and right fighting right along. Right, and then there's I just want to say as an aside, this is one of the things that makes AD and D and games like it uh, so accessible compared to more modern ones. So it's one of the advantages of random rollover point buy. If you have point buy, you have to know all the options. You have to read through all the rules and say, okay, what's optimal for the kind of character that I want to build? If you have random roll, you reduce the number of options, right? If, if you didn't roll nine intelligence, then you can't be a magic user. If you didn't roll that 17 charisma, then you can't be a paladin. So it reduces the number of options you have. Then you, you just choose from that narrow uh, range of options. And then you go ahead with that. So once you've decided to be a paladin, you just have to know what paladins do. You don't have to know what magic users can do. You don't have to know what thieves can do. You just have to know about paladins because your character is a paladin. But if you have point by and if you have the one character's ability can help another character's ability and blah, 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 this complex interplay of rules, you have to know all the rules. So first edition keeps things very accessible so that anyone can just walk up to the, the game table and in 15 minutes after after eight to 11 dice rolls and a couple of decisions of choosing uh, what spells they're going to memorize for today and you know what gear they have and so on, um, can just start play. And as the player, sorry, as the character gains in levels, and as the, then more options come up, you know, you, the thief gets better at picking pockets. The uh, paladin can now have this or that power and so on. The, things open up. But by that stage, by the time you've gone through those levels, you're very familiar with what your character can do now. So having these extra ones, you're well and truly ready. So as the character gets to know the game world, gains in level, you, the player, get to know the rules as well. So it, it makes it very accessible to uh, newer players. And other things like Classic Traveler and so on are the, are the same. That tended to be the way games were written in those days, role-playing games anyway. There were other things like Advanced Squad Leader that were not. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, the role-playing games tended to be written that way. Nowadays, the games are, tend to be written a bit more, well, at least the commercial ones, uh, the mainstream commercial ones are written a bit more to um, uh, reward mastery of the rules. The rules. <laughs> yeah. And, and that is, that is something, I mean, around this channel, I, I just, if, if you're newcomers and I know there's a lot of folks like um, I've been active on Twitter and I got to say, sticking to role-playing stuff, it's, it's a very, it's a pretty positive place by and large. Uh, talking about role-playing stuff to people. And so if you're new, if you're just coming to the channel from that environment, or maybe YouTube recommended you up to, to see one of the ranty videos I did today, and you're just coming here, I just want you to know, classic AD&D people are like, oh man, all those weird rules that you had to know. No, it is very accessible. And that was kind of the whole point. Kyle and I, both of us, BSing mixed in and me responding to tweets and not being in the ideal environment for rolling up a character, stepping up and leaning over and making sure the camera was in focus and, and chit-chatting with Kyle. Kyle and I built two characters in probably a grand total of 10 minutes. And it's, it's well, just... Well, I mean, yeah, 40 minutes have passed in the, in the cast and we've had all that other shit talking and all the rest. So... Yes. <laughs> we've got two yes. characters. And, and it and it's just it, it is it is just um, 
so so many of the horror stories i see and like i get a lot of pushback uh from people who are like don't you gatekeep don't you make people be system masters i don't I, I i i really and truly don't and i don't think anyone should do that and i i see you know well the game master expected us to know this and the game master expected us to know that all i expect you to know is that from two to four hours you're probably going to have fun you know i tend to think i'm a pretty good dm so i i that is the guarantee that is the first edition ad and d guarantee or the original D and D guarantee. If you want to play some other D and D, if you if you want to get really groggy and try that, um, that that's that's all uh, that that I that you need to worry about is just just sit back. It's it's like I told the showman, and I'm going to do a tale, tales of tabletop triumph. I I think I know I've told you guys. I don't know if I've told Kyle, but I was setting up a massive table of Dwarven Forge for an event at my FLGS uh, a few years ago. And this guy about my age comes over and he's looking at everything. He goes, wow, is this Warhammer? And I was like, no, no, it's this is D&D. &D. And he's like, oh, man, yeah. It's, uh, back in the 80s, I, w I really wanted to play D&D, &D, but the kids... Uh, who played D&D &D in my middle school, they, they didn't want me to game with them. So, you know, I never got the chance. And I said, oh, cool, go in the store and buy some dice and come back out and sit down and play. And he immediately, oh, no, I don't know how to play. I, I wouldn't, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Go get dice, come back, sit down and play. And he's like, really? And I was like, really, really? So this cat who is about my age played D&D &D for the first time. Right then, right there, he started his DNA. Now, I don't know if he went and bought books and started up a campaign of his own or if that was the one time. But I didn't like go, hmm, yeah, if you've never played, it would take too long to know. You're not really s cool on the system, you know? Like it would, it would just be to, we played OD and D. It was uh, characters on note cards. For OD and D, I think he died once, and he was like, "Oh," and I was like, uh, "Roll, roll three d six in order. You've got the same equipment the other guy did." <laughs> and, and that's I remember, uh, so when I had the open game table at the club, and um, this player Paul, who unfortunately he's gone and lived to work in Perth, so we can't game together anymore. But um, Paul, I can't even remember what his character was, but his character died. And uh, he, he went, oh, and I said, yeah, I'm sorry, man. That's just the way the dice go sometimes, you know. Uh, just roll up another one and we'll bring you in as soon as we can. And he's like, oh, no, no. Oh, my character can, my character tied. It actually feels okay, he said. It actually feels good. <laughs> I was a bit surprised by that. But, I mean, he'd come from playing all the later editions where they do and and with game masters who just fudge everything to make it not happen. But he meant like there was real stakes. His decisions actually mattered. So, you know, the results of them uh, were the results of those decisions were more exciting for him. So the, the triumphs really meant something because like, unless you have the chance to die horribly, <laughs> then it doesn't mean so much when, when you have a triumph. But if you do have that chance to die horribly and it actually, it's a one in a million, but it actually works, then yay, you know. So I remember well, being surprised by that. And he became a long time player with us. Uh, only when he moved to Perth did he stop. And I, I think that that speaks to a lot. Of it. Now, this is, it's going to sound a little negative and a little dish and worry, but I promise I'm not, I'm not going down there because. I don't have the time or the, the energy to waste on this kind of thing. But um, I, I was talking to T-Shirted Historian, who's a fun guy. By the way, subscribe to T-Shirted's channel. Please do that. Go to T-Shirted Historian's channel and subscribe there. It's a good, fun channel about geek stuff, RPG stuff. Good good place to go and BS. Um, but he, he was telling me he, he had been speaking to someone who had worked on the early development of fifth edition and the, the design goal of wizards of the coast was six sessions, six total sessions. And that's what brings in the whole, I want to, 
I, I, I want to, uh, I want to have this massive backstory. Well, you've got to have the massive backstory because you're not going to play that character for more than five or six weeks, right? So you want to you want to come up with your story about your your uh, half drow tiefling yada 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 Mary Sue character because you have to get in there in there because you're not going to play that. But if you start with the idea of I am Bob, I am fighter, or as uh, Robert Phillips says, I am Zed, I kill for Zardoz. Like, you, you know, that just, just that's it. But you build that character over many sessions. I mean, there's people playing in the Monday night campaign that have been playing the same characters for multiple years. They have built their backstories from I'm Petra. I'm a fighter. I was raised by dwarves. I hit things with a hammer, you know? Well, it's an interesting question because it's quite possible that their market research had, had revealed that, like, that's about as long as most campaigns last anyway. And so they might have gone with that. Because, like, I remember years ago, so it must have been 2005, something like that, I did a survey on RPG Net of, like, uh, edition neutral of, or game neutral. Um, how long did your last campaign last? How many sessions? Uh, and... The averages, I said, exclude one session fizzles where, you know, you get like it happens all the time. People get together, they roll up characters and they don't manage to get together for a second session. Uh, I said <laughs> exclude that. But from the comments, it was obvious that people didn't exclude that. So so take that with it. And from memory, it was like 10 to 12 sessions was the average. Um, so this was one of the things that convinced me to to run games for about 10 to 12 sessions, which worked out neatly later on as being like a, when I had children to be a school term. <laughs> so a 10 mm -hmm. to 12 weeks, um, because I, re I, re I re like, if they're going to leave or stop after 10 or 12 sessions anyway, uh, we'll just plan for that. And my, re my reasoning was after that, we, um, if people are tired of it and want to do something new, we can do a new campaign, a new game. If they really love it, we can do a season two of that campaign but we would have a complete kind of series i don't want to say story arc but you know what i mean a complete like here, here's the the temple of elemental evil or whatever you can get through that and or you can do through a chunk of that an interesting chunk of that in 10 to 12 sessions you can do a couple of smaller modules um like the lizard swamp one um in uh, a, a few sessions so you can do a few of those modules um and get up to maybe second or third level or something like that depending how you go so uh my, yeah my reasoning was keep it tight like that and it also helped retain players who you can get players who after two or three sessions they're like yeah, i'm not sure about this game i'm not sure about this group and so they just drift off but if they know that it's going to be 10 or 12 sessions and then end they stick around and when they stick around by session six they're going oh yeah actually this is quite good now i'm into it um, so by constraining it like that, I uh, increased the, re the retention of players and, and their engagement. And it also meant that they were more willing to give new games a go. So if they were always playing D&D &D, and I said, hey, how about next time we play Cthulhu? They were more likely to give Cthulhu a go. Whereas if I'd just done this open game table and said, hey, who wants to come play Cthulhu? I might not have got much, much interest. So I found that was a good approach. But... I, I was trying to make a, a positive of it, um, whereas, like like you said, wizards have sort of said, oh, the, the, they only last six sessions. Okay, they've got to have this big backstory because they're not going to get any story in the sessions. And my approach was, if they're only going to last six or 12 sessions or whatever, let's get them really engaged in that time. So they, even if they don't last in that game, they stay with me as a game master <laughs> or as a fellow player and uh, we could stick around in a, in a good group over the years and it can have lots of people to call on to um, play games with in future. I, I was thinking, so I guess, but I guess uh, wizards are thinking in terms of <coughs> how they can make money from, you know, the online character generators and the, the, the records yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Whereas I was thinking in terms of how can I keep my little social group together and have friends, <laughs> which yeah. is different. We're, we're 
different paragraphs, but we're on exactly the same page. I mean, you know, I, 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 I love what I've done with the Monday night game. Um, but with that said, if it was the same group and every 12 sessions, we were like, let's play aftermath. Let's play call of Cthulhu for a few months. Let's play, um, which, to be honest, a Call of Cthulhu campaign that lasts for a few months is an incredibly long Call of Cthulhu campaign. Um, <laughs> if you're not driving them insane or having them eaten by something with tentacles, you're doing it wrong, keepers. Um, you know, let, let's, uh, or, you know, let's play Ghostbusters or Twilight 2000 or whatever. Whether it is that long running campaign um, or it is broken up into different games that you try, but you keep the same gaming group. That level of engagement is awesome. And I think that should be, that should, that, that should be the approach is building that, that group and that fellowship and that togetherness. Um, and, and that's why I said that one of the, the great things that they did do, I've got to give them credit for that, is the Adventurers League stuff of just, you know, having officially signed up game masters who would organize things and, and funneling players to them. I, I think that was great. You know, that was what the old Role Playing Games Association tried to do with the, with the tournaments and all that, and tournament play with to different levels of success from what I've heard. I mean, I was too young for all that. But, uh, yeah, different levels of success. But they were trying, you know. Yeah, and one thing, like, I... I like you, like when I went to Gary Con in 2018, I I really I couldn't fault what I saw at Adventures League's table. It's kind of neat the idea of playing a game, get a magic item, level up, and that DM basically says, "Yes, he did this. Yes, he actually went through the module. He actually now has a cloak of displacement and a potion of healing. He's got that." I put my stamp on his character sheet. We enter it in. And then you can go to whatever game you say and say, yeah, this is a legit character. So I can't fault them for for introducing a mechanic like that that kind of keeps things consistent. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that, that keep that keeps things. Yeah, I don't care about that. I care about the, the fact that they help get game groups together. Yes, exactly. And that and that to to, to my next point is if that's if that kind of bonds things together a little better than whatever. I mean, if somebody came to me and said, hey, look, I want to play first edition AD&D with you, right? Right. Okay. But there's a couple, two or three other DMs. I see some Roll20 games of it and that sort of thing. Can we kind of do something where, like, I get your your stamp of approval on whatever goes on in your game if I take that character? I'd be all for it. You know, I'd be all for it if it, if it, if it helped build up that sense of community. You know, because that guy might go to that DM and say, yeah, I, uh, Bill Sylvie DM me in a game. And that's where I got this keen suit of, of uh, 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 ethereal plate mail. And then I wind up talking to that person. I I'll give you a perfect example of that in action back in. I, I was I was going to uh, do another deep dive into Dragon magazine. And back in the Dragon, they used to have a, a feature called Mapping the Dungeons. And it was just classified <clears throat> at for DMs and players. And when I was looking in issue number two, just scrolling through it, because I don't have a physical copy, because I don't have a thousand bucks to spend on a physical copy of Dragon Magazine number two. Um, I'm looking through there. And lo and behold, and I, I got to tease him about this. I, I, I'm friends with the guy. One of the Dungeon Masters listed is none other than Alan Hammock. Now, if you guys don't know who that is, Alan Hammock ended up working for TSR and becoming uh, uh, an author for them. He worked, uh, he edited the World of Greyhawk box set. He worked on uh, A3 Assault on the Area of the Slave Lords is his baby. Um, Alan's been on the show a number of times, and he's a swell guy. I love having him around. But there's a perfect example of the sense of community. He started out as a guy who just wanted to play D&D and was looking for people to play D&D with. And then, boom, winds up working at TSR, winds up publishing stuff. 
Sad Wing says, oh, I may have a number two. Uh, I'm guessing you mean number two uh, Dragon Magazine in your stuff, not <laughs> you look a number two in your stuff. I hope not. Um, let's see. I, I'm just catching up with y'all's uh, y'all's chats. Um, yeah, uh, Tanek Safi has a, a games as often as, as we do. Um, let's see. Uh, Office Max looking to eliminating. She says she's knowing if she's going knowing going in if she's going to stay with one gaming system or changing up after each module. Yeah, that's, it's all valid as long as people know what they're getting into. Yeah, exactly. So, and I, you know, I, I kept it open ended to say, okay, this it will be a, you know, unless you suffer a TPK, it will be a complete little thing in these ten to twelve sessions, um, and after that, we'll discuss what we want to do. And and the option was always there to just keep going. So in principle, that could be the, the same as with your game group bill. It's just that um, what is it, eleven years? So forty four times in a row, they said, let's keep doing D and D. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it, it, essentially, I, and I'll be honest with you, I've told them, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling the world, my goal is to run GDQ, which is kind of the, the physical graffiti of AD&D modules. I happen to think physical graffiti is the greatest Led Zeppelin album, and I think that's a pretty good uh, pretty good honor to give the the D&D modules. But um, after Q1, whether Loth eats them all, or they die horribly before they get to her, or they squash her like the spider woman she is. Somebody else can de somebody else can game master for a while, because it'll probably be another three or four years before we finish that. And at fifteen years, I think I'm allowed vacation. <laughs> Sabbatical. The, um, the Maybe I'll bring you in to run us through some aftermath if you, if you can get free at that hour. Yeah, because I'm sure you want to wake up at like one o'clock in the morning local time and start hanging out with a bunch of nerds. <laughs> well, whether I like it or not, it's what my family thinks of it is another matter. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I couldn't sleep last night, hon. <laughs> Again, weird. It only happens on Tuesdays. I can't explain it. Uh, it's but just a boy be the voice keeping my uh, my wife awake <laughs> when i do the streams on on uh, it's thursday middle of the day you know so she's working in the, in the bedroom home office and yeah. i start talking and about five minutes later i hear the door close <laughs> <laughs> she can't concentrate on her work with all the nerd talk and i used to, but it's not as bad as when i was um uh, playing insurgency sandstorm in the evenings uh, <laughs> My online shooter, team shooter, and uh, she was a bit distressed by all the profanity and <laughs> sounds of ex explosions and people dying and stuff. <laughs> so it's not as bad as that. <laughs> well, I see you've you've got your. Uh, uh, yes, we are, we were having a player filter in, but until everybody hops on board, uh, we're waiting. Uh, one of our players has a family birthday, so he may be. He said, "I may be a wall." That's something else. Just just to 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 put a fine point on this, boys and girls. Um, real life happens, you know. I'm not. I, there's horror stories of DMs throwing fits when character or when players rather don't show up, and you know that sort of thing. Real life happens. Don't ever apologize to me for my mom was sick. I'm so sorry I didn't make it to the D and D game. What did the, the the thing that makes me mad is that you're apologizing to me for not being at the D and D game because your family was sick or you had a life event. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean that's the uh, as well. That's the flip. Even from the point of view of the, the thing for the game, the flip side of the game being accessible and that any anyone can walk in at any time is anyone can walk out at any time. And then, if they want to, walk back in, whether that be because they're sick of the game for a bit and they need a break or because their mum's sick or they're working late or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's accessible, but it also means you can walk in, walk out, walk in, walk out. That's fine. Yeah. Now, the one thing I will tell you, and this this is kind of a humorous tabletop horror story. I, a dear friend of mine, he's... he's uh, 
I, I've known Kevin longer than I have not. He, he, he's that long of a, of a friend. Um, he, uh, yeah, there's two. We're, we're, we're just missing uh, one, one more player to get started here. But uh, I've known Kevin since 1989. Kevin is a brilliant uh, game master. And Kevin, uh, from the bottom of my heart, if you're watching this right now, I mean this. Um, stop switching games, damn it. Kevin Kevin will run these fantastic superhero games using Hero System, sometimes set in a homebrew world, sometimes set in Marvel, or we'll play Call of Cthulhu, or I can convince him to play AD&D, and we'll get like five sessions in, and it, like after that fifth session, he'll go, you know, this campaign is good, but I was thinking we could try out... <laughs> Back to this one. Let me tell you what, folks, if you're new to tabletop gaming, there never is a more pernicious lie that you will hear from a game master's mouth than we'll come back to this in a few sessions. <laughs> or we're just going to play a one off of this next week and then we're going to jump right back in. No, you won't. No, they won't. <laughs> no, it's no. That is a lie. That is a complete lie. Just get used to the idea that it's a lie. When you leave that campaign behind, it's done. It is, it is completely over. It's like putting away the takeout food. When you come in from a late night of partying and you put your, 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 your bar, your restaurant and bar burger and steak fries in the fridge, and you're like, I'm going to eat that for lunch in the morning. Or, or uh, tomorrow. No, you're not. It's going to sit in the fridge for four days and you're going to go, what's that smell? And you're going to throw it out. <laughs> I'm never coming back to that campaign when your game master says that. And Kevin, if I wrote modules for all the campaigns, buddy, that you never came back to, that's all that would be in these shelves behind me. That's it. Nick <laughs> is an inveterate game chameleon. I love him like a brother. And he is a brilliant game master and a great game player. But damn it if he doesn't change games after six or seven sessions. Oh, he needs to be a player, not a, not a, a game master. The problem he needs to have less control. He's mastering so much he get he he gets bored as a player. <laughs> I will say this, the longest, we actually did play a campaign uh, set in Wheel of Time using the D20 Wheel of Time game from from the early, early 2000s, because my wife loved it. She gamed with us at the time. That game lasted almost a full year. And for Kevin, that was unprecedented. And then we like switched over to a 3E game that lasted for almost a year. So there were two times, and he's never gone back to that. So. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to pull out and I'm going to leave, leave you to your gamma world. This was an unexpected groovy treat having you here tonight, Kyle. Well, you were going to talk about D&D &D and I'm free, so. Excellent, excellent. Uh, go, go watch The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, smoke a cigar and drink some scotch. <laughs> See you, boys and girls. Have fun. Peace. My co-host, Kyle Shuant. But now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what many of you have come here to do is to watch us play a little bit of that good old gambling world. So we're going to add our players here. Starting as numbers, Rab, we have Doomsword Deathmaster. What's up? Bogo Jorts, of course, played by Tonka Todd. Hero, and hero, hero. Herself, that, that uh, magnificent mechanical medic 4077, because that's what you guys voted to keep her name as. Sapphire, good evening. Evening. How is everyone? Good. So, it's Friday. It's awesome. It is Friday. It's Friday all day. That is what I'm told. I mean, it's the 13th, but hey, you know. Exactly. It's, but It's, it's kind of crazy. But only, it's for, only for a couple more hours and change. So. You know, if I can put on my, my nerd hat for a minute and push up my nerd glasses, Friday the 13th, they say, is a superstitious holiday because that was the date that the Knights Templar went down to yes. the, uh, the King of yes, France. Yes, it is. It is. 
That's fascinating. I did not know that little bit of historical knowledge. So um, last week, your party is scouring the outskirts of Lanta. Now, um, of course, Doomsword had a had an issue. He couldn't be here uh, tonight. Um, Kevin, who <laughs> went through three characters last week. <laughs> I know. I felt so bad for the guy. Well, I hope he doesn't feel like that we were just killing him off just to get him out of the game because that's not true. But uh, uh, so Kevin can't be here this week. Uh, he is playing a pure strain human who will stand in the back and uh, and oh, he's gone back to the pure strain. Be strangely silent. I I think he did end up going back to a PSH, but uh, you had found a. Uh, the ruins of some kind of building, some kind of complex, and in it is a vehicle that oh, seems right. to be yeah. nearly perfect condition. So you are there. You are in the bombed out building. Um, numbers. Yeah, I, think I need to be in the front because I'm not going to fit in the back. And we know who's in the back that's going to fit just fine and was calling yeah. as his like <laughs> living room back there. But <laughs> Yes. Um, so there you are. What do you wish to do, adventurers? Well, we're checking out this vehicle and seeing uh, if it's functional, if it's fueled up, if it's going to be useful for us. Alrighty. And somehow I'll have to try to get my wings in there. <laughs> yeah, you you may have to lay them along the back. You know, just <laughs> sort of Yeah, you're not you're not exactly used to like what what do I do with the wings? Um yeah, they're kinda new to me. <laughs> uh let's see. Let's let let me get my uh whoops. Get my my game world open here. There it is. All right. Um, so I'm pretty sure uh, I could not pretend to be a hood ornament. Well, you could pretend. I mean, you know, the, the whole point of pretend is it, you know d doing something that that you're not. Um, or I'll, why why would we be here if that wasn't the case? Um, so numbers, what are you doing here? Well, I suppose I'm gonna look at this. Uh, I suppose I'm gonna look at this vehicle since I've been the resident driver. Yeah, okay. This looks like a fine piece of cat. I've seen one like this 10, 12 years ago. It is in very good shape. The mesh neoprene wheels seem to be in good condition. Nothing's broken. Nothing's cracked. You know, some of the plastics are a little bit yellowed, but otherwise it is in good shape. You are fairly certain it should start and run. Does it have All a right. baby seat in it by chance? Right. There is... I think those are small seats in the back, so I don't think you're going to need one. Gamma World, Gamma World is from the far future, before the apocalypse happened. So you are actually able to, uh, you know, what? Give me a, D, give me a couple of D10 rolls. You want low, and yes, you can apply your int modifier. Okay, here we go. Uh, two minus two is zero. Okay, yeah, you, you're you're able to fold out. There's a there's a child safety seat, a futuristic child safety seat right back there. Uh, that is, it, it's almost like a barca lounger for for Bogo. So yeah. yes, there is a there is a baby seat. If y'all need, yeah, this thing was made for you. Well, let's fire it up. Okay. Um, you have you have uh, used turbine cars before, so I will not require a roll. However, however, you know from looking at the various panels and whatnot, when you flip a couple of uh, flip a couple of switches there to activate it. Let me see here. Come on.
Um, so the turbine car actually requires fuel and although it does have a solar cell on it that uh you know it's it's an ancient technology you're not sure how it works when the sun shines on it electricity happens um but it does have a solar cell that powers like the lights the navigation system climate control systems and so on but you will have to acquire fuel you will have to bring fuel to this car but once you do that you've got a very good condition vehicle that should probably fire right up um so what what type of fuel is this um the turbine car it's it is a a jet turbine so basically if it's liquid and it burns it goes it's like a think of the uh, the gas turbine in in a uh, in an abrams tank you know you could right, potentially right. take the contents of a liquor store dump it into an abrams <clears throat> tank and, and run it right right so if there was a fast food if, all based. if there was a fast food vat of oil would that work uh that's a little too thick you'd have to have it constantly heated um but kerosene would but then you you'd have to you'd have to distill it first but all right we're gonna need some booze to get this started be on the lookout now one thing some kilometers away you have stashed your vehicle which does uh, use the same okay so they use the same fuel as as this would use we yeah. just have to siphon it out or whatever however much we have in there and bring it back didn't we all well we didn't get a map from that guy but we did get a pass to travel through this area mm -hmm. so well we can go get what we got already oh, yeah. yeah and come back or we can be on the lookout for something else well, let's go back, get what we need, and see if there's extra on the way. All right. So are these like uh, uh, fuel tanks like would be present in traditional vehicles nowadays where we've got to find a way to get the, the fuel out of the tank and into a container, um, that sort of thing? Or is it like a removable tank cell that has fuel already in it or something? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Okay, so the way they modified your ground car with the extra tanks, you would have to... Because it, it was basically like two 55-gallon drums that were welded in place to uh, to up the capacity. So you're going to have to find a way to get that out and and bring it here somehow. Right. And this particular vehicle, we just pour fuel into it, into whatever the receptacle is that serves as a fuel tank on it. Like there's a yeah. hatch on the side or something. It's it's got a uh, it, it, as you say a fueling receptacle. Okay. You fell down. Well, I can tell you, it's probably it's probably going to be easier to find something fresh. I mean, unless you got a way to haul off those big ass drums. Actually, and I have. Pour them in here. I have an idea for that. Eh. What if we uh, took the vibro blades? cut the top out of the car and just sled the top of the car with the tanks on it over to our car. Who's, 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 who's pulling this sled? And not well, you. Well, you look, you look very big and strong. Yeah, it looks at us even, you know, I figured you were going to take that direction on it. <laughs> hey, well, let what, me, what? let me guess you go for a ride as well. You just sit on and I'll pull you along. Exactly. Or we could have we could have Sir not appearing in this film uh tow it. <laughs> yeah, that's not really gonna work. 
Oh, uh, look. Now, they... if we had kept the last guy alive who was like a rhinoceros thing, we would have had a chance, but no. Um, is there anywhere around here just uh, looking around? What's uh what's surrounding us? So we've got some ruined buildings and that sort of thing. Okay, so the building that the that the vehicle is setting in, um there are sun faded to almost white uh ancient images of vehicles like this one uh there are the crumbling remains of artificial plants um several low seats that are sprung and sagging in some kind of a counter uh just just crumbling bits of of detritus and junk here and again all right and and no other vehicles or vehicle parts within this location at this time right not up here in the front of it no you guys came in through kind of a warehouse sort of area uh with some bits and pieces of junk you could you could potentially check out yeah let's investigate to see if we've got any uh spare parts or anything else like that that might come in useful yeah and let's look around outside see if there's anything uh anything particularly ruined that we might be able to salvage some fuel from to at least get back to our store now this is something you guys are aware of because you encountered it um in the large open sandy lot in front of this place you oh, see the some plant thing yeah yeah you see some short tufts of grass and that is where numbers rab was almost uh crushed and eaten by um by uh carnivorous grass lurking just under the sand and your new companion, your, your rhinoceroid companion, who came out and said, "Hey guys, glump yank," and essentially, yeah. Got. And I, I did actually catch the part where they were throwing grenades at me and stuff. So <laughs> I haven't forgotten that. Uh, hey, I wasn't I throwing you grenades twice. I saved you twice. Yeah, she was shooting poison needles at me, throwing grenades at my feet. I saw that. I used the two med packs and saved your butt. So, hey. Yeah, too bad you didn't save the guy who lost two characters. He was okay. gone before I had a chance. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I suppose we'll do what they say. You know, explore around in here. It was. Well, okay, guys. What's uh, what, what's what's your next uh, what's your next move? You have a vehicle in your perfect condition, no fuel for it. You know where some fuel a few kilometers away is. I guess we'll explore the interior of this building, those places that we haven't already looked, and then uh, what afterward. Uh, go outside and look around and see if we can find some sort of fuel source that's closer than a few kilometers away. Now okay. we have a reason to look for that. And, and something preferably away from the sand pit. Yeah, that's that's th that pit is like like fifty or sixty meters diameter. So you're gonna have to you're really gonna have to skirt that. All right, so you are searching the building. And let's see. Am I still on? Can I still be heard? Yep, you're yeah. you're on. Yeah. All right. Are are there are there shelves in this warehouse like building? Yeah. Like oh, yeah. Bogo wants to climb up to the very top if he can and just kind of survey and run and jump from the top shelf to top shelf you know okay um what it what is what is bogo's uh uh dexterity please he thinks he's it a is cat. a it is a heroic 13. a heroic 13 okay almost ninja like some would say <laughs> uh well you almost you almost yeet yourself off of the uh, off of a uh, off of a shelf, um, right onto the floor, 
which is like three meters down, uh, but you manage to catch the one you are jumping to. Just letting I look you know. at Bogo, and I do like this ninja move just to mock him. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, le curiously lying on a shelf there, um, Bogo, you spy what appears to be the head of some kind of animal, but it's, it's carved out of, out of stone that was broken off. Um, that's, that's just been kind of idly thrown there. Uh, it's got a thick layer of dust on it. So whether it was put there the day before the war or five years ago, you don't know. Um, there's something that looks like a smaller version of the uh, of the uh, ancient computer terminals you've seen, except it has way fewer buttons that are just numbers, and it's got a large dent in the side. And lying next to it is a strange thing. It it, it resembles a snail shell. Um, it's it's really not much larger than a centimeter on on either side, but it looks artificial. Did we lose Tonka? I, I'm I'm here. Oh, okay. You're you're taking it in. You're taking it. In. I I got you. So do, is he holding this up? Can I see him holding this thing up? I are you holding it up? Uh, if 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 it is uh, small enough for me to lift it up above my little tiny adorable head, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's for for you. It's 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 like you know, like that big in your hand. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take it from him. I'm going to look at it and I'm going to shake it for a second and then give it back oh, to him. It it doesn't do anything. It's it's kind of conical and on the the pointiest end it's it's blunt and it it's it's a little dry uh and, and inflexible but it does have kind of a uh on the conical and it's it's got sort of a tip with an opening in the middle of it. Like it's meant to be inserted somewhere for some purpose. I'm going to give it to him and say, hey, it's a musical instrument blowing it. Well, of course, Bogo is going to start playing a lively tune. Uh, yeah, it doesn't do anything. It, it just, you're. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we can use it to like put fluid in the tank or something. Who knows? Bring it along. Also, what, what, what about the the animal head? Uh, it's a little bit bigger than you are. Um, it probably weighs many many kilograms, and it appears to be made of marble. Also, I, uh, on a shelf, you uh, all notice this. Uh, in addition to Bogo, there is one of the objects that looks identical to one you saw back in the police station. It's a... Oh, we're snagging it, whatever it is. Wearish metal frame um, that it's it's matte black. It has uh, two large vertical bars, a horizontal bar connecting them, and another horizontal bar about halfway down. Mounted on that horizontal bar is a complex mechanical device and sort of mounted next to that is what looks like a spool of heavy thread or or wire or something that leads straight into that uh that that mechanical gadget thank you patty thank you for the uh the well wishes so you got that. Um, <laughs> and the only other object of interest or note here 
is oh, let's see well bogo you said you were the one looking around for things um let me see this oh Uh, Bogo, you also find a pouch. The, there, there's a leather pouch. It looks new compared to the rest of this stuff um, that has 39 domars in it. And that's basically the coin of the realm. You have 39 domars that somebody... I will very, I will very stealthily sneak that away oh, like I did yeah, the TV yeah, and the other yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm I'm doing my hand here. We are splitting this, bud. Splitting it. I carry you. I should be charging you for that. But we split this evenly, okay? Bogo hands her the, the thing that he thinks is a flute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's 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 offer he's offering you this this plastic rubber tipped item and uh yeah, not hand no, you the, 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 bag. the bag the bag not the funnel the bag i'm not taking your like toss off musical instrument thing no it's the bag dude bogo, otherwise you're bogo. walking you want to walk bogo gives her a sad look very very sad puppy dog guys and then starts rolling the big marble head over to her no, no, it's the bag, or you're walking. <laughs> you choose. Bogo, Bogo will take the coins out of the bag, trying to oh, be very oh, inconspicuous. Oh, oh, yeah, no, no, no. And he'll hand her the bag. Clank, 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 clank. I just look at him. I guess someone wants to walk on their stubby little legs instead of fly above the dangers, huh? He he just starts throwing the coins at her. <laughs> <laughs> I catch him and I put him in the bag. All right. And then when so, I finally get all the coins, I will divide them up equally. <laughs> And I'll say, this is fair. I will carry you. But so remember this in the future. That's 13 domars each. I'm sorry, you were saying Doomsword? <clears throat> yeah, so this, uh, aside from that foolishness that's going on in the other corner of the room, uh, what's, uh, this, uh, this thread on this spool or filament or whatever, what does it appear to be made of? Um... It's that strange sort of soft yet semi-rigid substance that was on the other one back at the police station. Uh, you know, it's something that the ancients manufactured. Um, the whole thing weighs about a, a kilogram if you pick the spool up, which you can easily do. Yeah, is it relatively um, full? Yes. Right. Um, I want to take a strand of it and bend it. Does it just bend, or is it like brittle to where it breaks? Uh, no, it it bends. It's 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 flexible. All right, nice. Um, yeah, I'm gonna grab that spool. Okay, J just you're you're just taking the spool off. Yeah, yeah. I'll kick the rest of that crap onto the ground where it belongs. <laughs> 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 it falls over with a sad clunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there was liquid in it or something, that'd be one thing. But we we leave the obsolescence where 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 it lies. <laughs> Understood, sir. Understood. Okay, so um, you've got the spool. You've got the domars. Um, I'm not sure who has a little strange gadget. Um, There are some workbenches back here. 
nothing else really of interest. Um, any any uh, containers in here, or like uh, hoses, rubber hoses, or anything like that? Uh, there there is what it, it looks like one of the uh, one of the the big round fuel containers from your vehicle but it is uh it is a pale blue color and doesn't appear to be made from the same material right and it's the it's the same size though uh, meaning it would be unwieldy uh if it are was completely there, like, full yes poles? it would be unwieldy. are there wooden poles that we could like string it through a handle and tag team carry it between the two of us since we've got a dwarf little baby that's not going to carry anything <laughs> Possibly. I mean, you you might have to find pipes or poles or something like that to do it, but uh, do you think that may be a legitimate way to try and move it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's... Moving it, yeah. There's nothing in it, though, right? I mean, it's just like an empty drum. It's like a, a few rotting pieces of cloth and uh, some scraps of metal. Uh, what look like... Right small containers that have been crushed down flat with some bright coloring on them, something of the ancients. Yeah, can I empty all that stuff out? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's light enough and that's light enough that you can literally tip it over and shake that stuff out. Yeah, yeah I'll shake that stuff long out. since evaporated by now. And I'll just, uh, well, uh, you know, it, it appears to be pieces of, uh, it appears to be pieces of refuse and whatnot. I don't know what they would do with this stuff. Some sort of scrap. But I say we take the container. I imagine I could oh, throw yeah. it over my shoulder. Well, let's let's grab like a metal pole or something like that. So once we fill it up, because once we put fuel in it, it's going to get heavy. So between the two of us, I'm sure we can move it to some degree. Yeah, yeah but I ain't carrying that thing for a couple of KMs. Yeah, That's no. for sure. It, it weighs about, and it does have a lid that has a smaller lid attached to it. Um, right. Uh, but it, it it weighs about ten kilograms. The the whole the whole plastic drum. So, uh, you know, you, right. you like you're carrying it in one hand, and somebody else is carrying the other end in, in one hand. Uh, you wouldn't want to try and carry that just by yourself. Um. Anybody got any rope? wire anything like that well if we drag uh -oh. it it's going to be even harder we need to carry it together you and i yeah but that doesn't uh that doesn't help Bogo. out much in a combat situation well, combat, we're like... dropping it and doing our thing well my thought is we just uh we stab it with my knife here and we uh, create a big enough hole to pass through some sort of wire or something and drag it on its belly. Or, since it's, it's a barrel, we lay it on its side and we oh, roll, roll it like a wheel. Is it that sounds like a perfect job for you. <laughs> it's probably going to outweigh him <laughs> even before it's got anything in it. Okay. Bogo is going to pick up one of the cloths that fell out while ago, the refuge, and he's going to make himself a ninja mask. He's going to climb up on top of the barrel after they dump it on its side, and we're going to log roll this big boy. All right. Okay, you managed to not fall down, and you're sort of standing on it. Um, you go a few meters and promptly lose control and fall off of it. So he's doing a Captain Morgan impression. You were looking good right up until you weren't. You got you got about you got about five or six meters, and then it just got away from you. You didn't you didn't fall off and injure yourself. Uh, we'll say, yeah. Well, you, when I fell, I Captain Kirk rolled and came up and did the ninja move that uh, four hundred seven seven did me. I was, there you go. Um, uh, Do Ray, that's that's the 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 fellow who who you met said, uh, uh, yeah, I've got a few meters of rope actually uh, stashed. If if you guys wanna wanna try and and carry this thing, 
Yeah, maybe we should just tie it off, keep our hands uh, capable of grabbing weapons. I'll, I'll string it around my shoulder or something. All right. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll take my knife and I'll try to make a hole, you know, at an angle in the in the lid, and then through the uh, uppermost uh, corner of it, you know, it, it, to try to leave it relatively intact to where any holes would be towards the top of the capacity of the container and uh, thread through some rope and uh, tie a knot and then tie another knot and throw it over my right shoulder and drag it. Okay. So he's, um, yeah, he, he's, he'll help you with a rope. Um, and you're, you're quite able to, to start moving out in that direction. I mean, I, I'm assuming, are you guys heading back to your previous vehicle? Well, let's look around for a second first. What do you think? Maybe there's something else around here. Maybe there's another abandoned vehicle, you know, that might have some fuel, something, even, even a little bit, even a little bit, it'll get us back a lot quicker. Well, if we're I'll here, vote yes. might as well. Yeah, I don't want to drag back kilos and kilos of fuel and that sort of thing. I mean, we could always drive back and figure this out here, but then we run the risk of something happening to the vehicle while we're gone. I don't want that either. Well, let's make it quick, but let's do a recon and move along. Fair enough. Can't you fly or whatever? I can fly. So I'll pop up and... Uh... Look around, see if there's anything that uh, pops out at me. Yeah, get an aerial view. You see any wrecked vehicles, let us know. Yeah, P Peter Pan that thing. <laughs> Not Tinkerbell. <laughs> okay, as you are flying over the suburbs, um, that's fortunate. Uh, as you are flying over the suburbs, um, you pass over a ruined building. You're like, is that vehicle intact right there? And a building nearby, about 24 meters away, something takes to wing and begins to fly towards you. And you recognize it immediately. It is a blash. Oh, I am like completely and totally turning around and flying as fast as I can to the group. And All as right. soon as they get into range, I'm gonna say danger. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna turn around and um start to fly back towards uh, the guys on the ground. So let's go ahead and roll initiative. You were not surprised by the blash, by the way. Roll a d6, Savvy. I rolled a five. Okay, you are very quick on the draw. Unfortunately, the blash uh, is faster and it zips over towards you as its action and you are going to try and dive to the ground correct yeah i'm going to try to avoid because i doubt i can get my needler out and fire at the same time so i'm going to evade okay you three on the ground um yeah you you see 4077 she is uh uh coming in out of the sun as it were um with uh, what is clearly a blash, I'm guessing you're warning the the party. Hey, giant radioactive yeah. uh, moth coming at me! All right. Okay. Too many of these things. Okay. Um, 
Doom Sword, what is uh, what is Numbers Rab doing? There's a blash coming at you. Yeah, recognizing the danger, of course. I, uh, I lift my laser rifle and point it at the creature and uh, with the intent to fire. Okay. Uh, what is... Um... Oh, well, well, what what is uh, Bogo Jorts doing? Bogo is looking around for a place that he can try to climb up to jump on the Blesh's back. Okay. Um, and finally, <laughs> a bold move to be sure. Um, finally, um, you see, uh, you see, Do Ray takes out uh, an ancient weapon and works some kind of action on it and raises it to his shoulder. Um, so, numbers, you can take your shot first. All right, I'll do that. I'm going to take a shot with the laser rifle, All aiming right. uh, directly at the head. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a miss. Okay, what'd you roll? I rolled a five, weapon class 13. Okay, it's got a pretty low armor class. Let me let me see here. A pretty poor armor class, I should say. Now, for those of you uh, kind of following along at home, um, Gamma World uses a weapon class versus an armor class. So let's see. 13 laser pistols and rifles, starts armor class. Eight. Ah, that's the physical attack matrix bill. That's different. Or rather, the physical attack, too, I should say. All right. Attacker's weapon class, 13. Target's armor class, 8. And you rolled a 5, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's that's a miss. So let's roll for initiative. Uh, since your life is kind of on the line there, uh, uh, 4077, why don't you go ahead and roll initiative, please? That's a 6, right? Uh, yeah, that is a d6. Okay. Uh, I got a 4. Okay, it got a five. Um, it is, it has moved down close enough that it will rad pulse. And let's see. Let me just take a quick. Uh, let's see. Uh, unfortunately, that will catch 4077. And we just got to see what's what's going to happen to you there. What is your uh, what is your constitution? Uh, that's 12. Oof. OK. All right. I will come back to you. Uh, go ahead and roll okay. uh, ro roll your attack, please, uh, Bogo. You are basically just going to roll a physical attack versus its armor class. Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to get up high so I can come down on it with my vibro blade. Oh, you, so you're climbing right now. You're climbing in this round, right? Correct. Okay, all right. So you're climbing up. And I will roll for, uh, yeah, there, there's a thunderclap of an ancient uh, slug thrower, essentially, fills your ears, and the, the shot does not, does not connect, let's see. So we got to see about that radiation, because that was, uh, that was a nasty charge of rads.
So that's percentage. Oh, that may have saved you. Just got to check that there. Oh, that's plant mutations. I don't think that will happen. You grow <laughs> vines. You have wings and vines. She has green thumb. And everything else is, too. We're a family I'm becoming show. a fairy at this point. <laughs> I know, right? We'll just port you over to D&D. <laughs> Why is your name a number? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh, so radiation damage. Let's see. But I, I believe that will actually mean that you, uh, you, you might actually take another mutation. Oh, good. <laughs> Next, I'm going to get horns, and I'm going to be, like, Maleficent. <laughs> All right, you guys, surrender. Or we'll unleash our succubus on you. <laughs> oh, I've got fangs, huh? Well. All right, so you took an 18 strength radiation blast. Your constitution is a 13? Yes. All right. All right. So, is 17, so can I avoid some of it? I don't know. Um, I will give you that to slightly modify that, and you are... Yeah, you feel like a wave of nausea come over you, and you're going to take some damage from that. I'm going to say that you take eight points of searing pain from okay. the the blast, and it is it is still flapping around you, trying to blast you again when it sees that you don't die. Okay. All right, Logo, you will be up over where this thing is currently fighting with uh, with Sapphire in the next round. Um, uh you're gonna you're gonna shoot at it again there uh numbers yep i'm gonna light him up take your shot this one is uh 19. that is a hit the uh associated damage is 11 plus uh 11 uh so 22. okay all right um why don't you roll initiative for the group? Alrighty, Daddy. What which dice is on is is on the chopping block tonight? Uh, tonight I am, I will be using the what color is that? The brown dice. I rolled a three, by the way. All right, party goes first. Uh oh, we lost Effie. Um. So party goes first. Dore will shoot and misses again. He's like, I can't that the winged woman is in the way. Um do you want to try and jump on it now? I can. Does doesn't numbers get, get to shoot before I do that though? Uh he already did. He already, already did, did. Oh, okay. Burn, uh, a good size hole in it. All right, rolling, and I roll a d20 here, right? Uh, that is correct. This is a physical attack against its armor class. Okay, here we go. Come on, Bogo, don't die, baby. Here we go. Ooh, and I rolled a two. A two. Uh, Bogo, you go <laughs> between it and, uh, and 4077. You land on the ground. You have your force field. So that absorbs some damage. 
Uh, yeah, it, it was uh, basically the equivalent of of a three a thirty meter fall, or not a thirty of a uh, ten meter fall. So you take uh, eight, 14 points of damage, but again, your force field absorbs that. Uh, you gonna take a shot at it there, uh, uh, four oh seven seven. Oh yeah, yeah I am. All right. I'm gonna use a paralysis dart. Okay. You wanna go paralysis or poison? Because this thing is pretty big. If it's big, yeah, let's go poison. All right, take your shot. Uh, I got a five. Uh, yeah, it it zings past it. That was a six, right? I'm supposed to be rolling a six. Six sided. Oh no, this is a D twenty. Oh, a D twenty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, let me get a twenty. That's okay. And let me get my glasses out because I can, so I can read the little die because it's the old school ones. Sure thing. Uh, that is a sixteen. That is a sixteen. That will hit. That so that's a, a poison attack. Yes. And this thing had. All right. So we go over to the poison table. So you absolutely hit it. Come on. Poison matrix. Strength of poison. Uh, roll 3d6 to see what the strength of poison is. All right. 3d6. Uh, 13. <laughs> Okay, um, it clearly didn't like that, and it is going to retaliate. Um, it blasts you with rads again. It is a strength 18, and unfortunately, you take 18. Oh. Can I maneuver around or no? Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you, can, still, you can still move around despite taking that damage. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know if I could avoid some of it or not, so... Uh, no, unfortunately not. Um, it did not kill you. Once again, you nope. are you are hanging in there. Um, that's that's twice. By the way, it's an 80-20 chance when you get exposed to radiation that goes over a certain amount that you'll just die. And you have actually somehow managed to not die. <laughs> <laughs> Twice, <laughs> you are you are in the death zone fighting this thing. So, uh, new round. Uh, the the fellow on the ground, Do Ray, yells, "Bring it to us!" And he's he's working the the mechanism on his weapon again to apparently ready another round. Uh, numbers, you take a shot at it. Yes, sir. Shoot. Die. Oh, that was pretty good. That's a fifteen. That will hit. And that's, uh, oh, this is big money. 14 plus uh, 9 is 23. Okay. Um, your laser intersects where it where its head should be, and said head explodes in a burst of insectoid colloidal manner, and it falls to the ground. Yeah. Cool. Let's see. Uh, roll a d20 for me there, Bogo. Okay. Kind of scared of this. On you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I rolled a nine. Okay. You, it's the goo. You, you roll out of the way as the thing spirals down and, and lands uh, and, and lands on the ground. If someone would like to to pick which Gamma World mutation 4077 gets, send us a super chat. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll roll it on the table. Come on, guys! Nice. Reach, reach into those wallets. <laughs> <laughs> you get to choose. You not only you chose my are... name or not my name, but <laughs> 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 you get to choose what else I get to be. 
Well, we'll take your mama's dentures. They got gold in them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Instant healing! Instant healing! Yeah, total total healing. That that would that would be my luck. Um, all right, so the blash is dead, and four hundred seven seven is not looking good. Um, looks looks like she is badly sunburned. Four hundred seven seven, you can taste metal. Oh. Not. Not like, hey, that's iron over there, but like you have a metallic taste in your mouth. I'm like feeling my teeth and my tongue. Okay. I mean, they're all there. It's just one of the lovely effects of ARS. Acute Has, radiation. Have they changed? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no obvious mutations have, uh, have, have happened to you. All right. Yeah, I like find some place to like spit the blood out and gather okay. myself as best as I can because I can't heal myself because I healed somebody else with the my two kids. Very true. <laughs> now pull yourself together. You see yeah, any vehicles I... down there or what? Yeah, I did, and I point the direction. Unfortunately, there were no liquor stores. I could have used one of those or a medical supply store, but no. Yeah, maybe there was something beyond the way. They should have programmed you with a better attitude, to be honest. <laughs> hey, I'm not an AI. Oh, okay. If I was, I wouldn't have these wings, okay? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know much about how all that works. Okay. So I point the direction of where hey, the can you walk? was. Oh, I can walk. All right, well, let's go. I mean, I'm going to be tentative for a while, but I can walk. Yeah, take the pain. Hey, we don't have a choice, so let's go. That's it. I mean, I fared better than the last two. <laughs> okay. But at, at, le at least I look cool when I was falling off that building. <laughs> Not really. You look like somebody yeeted a baby Yoda doll <laughs> out the car window. <laughs> and that bounce at the end. <laughs> okay. Uh, you make it back to where your vehicle was without any further troubles. Um, and it's still there. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> the first good thing to happen uh, since you entered this part of town, to be quite honest. Well, the second good thing, because you did find the one vehicle. So, how much fuel are you guys going to take? Um, <clears throat> my I mean, assumption is just enough. You would know how to enough. estimate. Yeah, you would know how to estimate what we need to be able to drive it here, approximately. Yeah, that's what I'm extra, thinking. Maybe a little. Yeah, extra, just enough to get us. Uh, just enough to be able to carry lightly and then get us back to this location. Yeah. Okay. Or back to our other vehicle, mm -hmm. rather. All right, so you figure maybe six liters at most just to get the vehicle powered up and, and moving. All right. Yeah, we'll take, you know, 10, and 20 pounds of this stuff. And, this, and between the two of us, we should be able to carry it somewhat reasonably fast without killing ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do it. Bogo's okay. Gonna ride on, Bogo's going to ride on the barrel like a horse. No. <laughs> no, you're not. I am not carrying your ass and this fuel. 
<laughs> you can uh, numbers uh, tires of his um, <laughs> antics and shoots him in the face with the laser rifle. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I'm <laughs> nah, just like, joke. you, you okay, are walking. You. you are walking here. <laughs> Those boots are made for this. You can crawl, you can slither, you can hop, you can levitate. I don't give a damn what you do, but you ain't riding that barrel. Go, go, hey, why go, don't go. you push it? Why don't you push it? Get behind it. Push it, you know? Maybe that'd be helpful. Push it real good. <laughs> Bogo will go to Sir not appearing in this episode and uh, do, do do the baby hands up thing to see if he picks him up. <laughs> Good luck. You don't even have the big cat eyes, okay? Yeah, he eats you instead. <laughs> no, he's a pure strain human. He he's like uh, he he <laughs> up and and is like what 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 do you want? I just keep doing the international pick me up. No, I said he picks you up and he, he looks at you and says, "What? What do you want?" And I, I, I start like acting like I want to like put my head on his shoulder, like I'm really tired from that fall off the building. He thinks it's a universal sign for nursing and says, "I don't have that equipment." Oh, okay. Uh, there, 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 little guy. And I will wet my finger and show my dominance over him. <laughs> All oh, right. you're doing a wet willy when he's carrying you. Yeah, that's gonna work. Roll, uh... <sighs> at least you only threw a grenade at me when I wasn't oh, here. For, for that, give, give, give me a d20. Alright, here we go. I uh, rolled a 10. All right, he wasn't expecting it, and you're right there. I'm going to say that's sufficient. He immediately like, ah! <laughs> and, then, and he drops you. <laughs> drop. I drop him that? on his head. Won't be the first time. <laughs> I guess he doesn't yeah. get it right. <laughs> that, that display, that display of dominance didn't end well for poor Bogo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, getting getting a wet willy kind of startled him, and he says, all right, look, your thing, if it needs to be carried, that's fine. If it puts a wet finger in my ear again, I will punt it all, 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 the, all the way to, to, to the, the big glow outside of town. <laughs> do what you gotta do, bud. You gonna, he he looks at you and says, "You gonna behave yourself now?" Bogo, For the record, uh, that's Bogo. not my thing. Bogo Bogo gives him the uh, doctor Doctor Evil a uh, little pinky in the mouth and gives him an adorable look and says, "Yes, like like a question." <sighs> he he picks you up by the scruff of your neck. And he's he's got, he's got his rifle poured at arms. He's not pointing it at you, but he's also not carrying you on his shoulder anymore. Let's go. Like a bad cat or a dog. Let's let's go. Let's move on. All right, let's start hoofing it to the car with the fuel. All right. Okay, so uh, Numbers just shakes his head and says, I don't believe this. This is nonsense. Come on. He starts moving the, the Travois there you've got with the, the drum. We'll make some quick encounter checks. Is uh, is uh, four zero seven seven still flying, or has she transitioned over to the ground now? I'm on the ground because I'm helping um, with 
carrying the fuel because we're using a pole. All righty. I mean, unless our, our unannounced player <laughs> along the group, besides carrying the doll at a at arm's length, can can carry the fuel, and then I'll scout out. But I I think I was going to be helping with the fuel, so. All right. I mean, it's. It's it's a grand total of like twenty five kilograms. So this is not this the this is not some laborious you know like oh so so one person can carry it reasonably. Uh, that's that's like fifty pounds, and it is unwieldy. But it's not it's not like you're trying to move a fuel drum a full drum full of fuel rather. And we're kind of rolling in, aren't we? So. Uh yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I'd fly then if one person can move it, rolling it without too much trouble. All right. But I'm not going to go quite as high, and I'm going to be, like, cautious this time, so I don't, like, catch any other flying, hopefully, <laughs> predators. Gotcha. Gotcha. All righty, so... You are moving along through the city, and since you are not flying at and a great altitude, I have my needler out, so I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Uh, and just for clarification, are you uh, uh, poison or sleep darts? Uh, I'm going to do poison up. just You're to gonna be on the safe side. Yeah. All right. Poison just to be on the safe side, just the way we like it. <laughs> Hey, there's big predators out here. I'm not risking it. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather be tried by 12 than carried by 6. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so um, you see a large number of Arn, which are their kind, their 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 big insects, but they're often uh, domesticated, used for riding or pulling loads or something like that, and they are uh, just sort of milling about, munching on some some dried mutated grass and in a uh, place where there was no building. Does there seem to be a corral or anything else, or are they, you know, contained? Or do they uh, seem uh, to be they, like a free they are, herd? They are not contained. They, they just appear to be wild. All right. Are they normally aggressive or no? No. I mean, if it just, just, Wild horses, but insects instead of, you know, beautiful, uh, majestic animals. Okay. Tell you what. How about I'll you fly hold down your position? Oh, never mind. Go no, for I'll it. fly back and uh, say, hey, we've, we've got this herd of these wild beetle things. Um, they don't seem to be uh, grouped in it uh, anyway or contained, so they may be wild, but... It's just something to be aware of. And then I'll kind why of fly we, back. Why, why don't we use them to pull this uh, barrel? Why don't we Why don't we use them to pull the car to the new car? There's lots of stuff you can use these for. It depends on how they regard you. I suggest you stay back and I'll go check it out a bit. Animals love me. <laughs> All right, well, then you I'll go, kind of, and I'll cover you. I'll, I'll fly in that direction, but I'll stay, like, with plenty of range where I first spotted them. So I'll just kind of hover there so I'm not too high, so hopefully not catch any additional attention or anything, but enough that they can see where I'm at, and then I can point to them. Okay. Um, 
The Arg don't act aggressive and they don't spook when you approach. They don't have any kind of tack or harness on them, so they definitely don't belong to anyone. They're just kind of milling about, um, sort of waving their antenna a little bit, and then they go back to, to crunching on, on dry grass. Bogo will, since they're not startled by me, Bogo will just casually take out his uh, sling and walk up to one, the closest one to me. And uh, while his head is on the ground, Bogo was going to try to slip the uh, uh, sling around its neck and jump up on its back. Okay. Um, I'm just going to hover and watch this. Let's see. This is either going to be really cool or really funny. <laughs> you left out the really bad part. You got three options here. Or else I, I, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to have to uh, worry about uh, creating a Bogo Jorts miniature in Blender to to eventually sell. Um, <laughs> so Bogo, you sidle over to the the giant uh, uh, insect. It sort of buzzes its wings a little bit and tilts its head and goes back to munching. And you throw the sling over it, and it kind of shakes its body and sidles away from you it doesn't act aggressively but it clearly doesn't want you to do that looks like you found your next mount <laughs> hmm. i don't have to carry you anymore well there's only one other thing bogo knows to do to establish do dominance so he starts <laughs> getting the finger ready <laughs> okay a beetle there's no ears well, he's he's doing what he's doing. What is uh, what is numbers doing? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, watching. Four oh seven seven. Are you doing anything? I'm gonna land next to numbers and just watch. Okay. All right, we're gonna roll a d six here, and on a one, it accepts your finger in some kind of orifice in its head. Oh, is that an eye? Is that a mouth? Oh, I don't well, know what that is. If you would, uh, if, is if it you a would. butthole? Bogo. You okay, did say rolling. face, okay. <laughs> rolling initiative. I rolled a four. You rolled a four. It rolls a four. Um, your actions are simultaneous. It bites you. Just, just leans over with its mandibles when it, when, like you stick the ear in it, it, jer it, it jerks its head and clamps onto you with its mandibles. Um, let's see. Am I able to reach his antennas? Um, well, it does six points of damage, which doesn't get through your uh, through your force field, fortunately. Um, but its head is close enough to the to you that yeah, you can reach its antenna. Okay, I'm I'm grabbing the antennas, and uh, I'm hanging on for all that's worth. He's slapping it and saying, "Bad beetle, bad Arn, beetle." He, he's he, he's he's arm uh, uh, breaking. Okay, um, the arm proceeds to leap around. The others are kind of dodging out of the way. A couple of them take to wing and zip away. The others are moving away. It's now bounding around with uh, Bogo on its back, holding its antenna. Um, Bogo, give me a D20 roll for the next round. I'm assuming nobody's doing anything. Oh, no. I'm sitting back uh, and laughing. <laughs> First roll. I rolled, okay, I, I, roll, I rolled a natural 20, and my oh. initiative is once again a 4. Okay, your initiative is a four, so you will go first, but that 20 is higher than your dex, I'm guessing, yes? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, what do you do when you go when you are bucked off and go flying? 
I pivot in the air and give the beetle two middle fingers if I have them. <laughs> <laughs> you do and you may. Uh, you land four meters away from it. Um, it's a new round. What do you wish to do? This thing is spreading its wings and getting ready to leave. Uh, I'm going to pull out my needler and uh, use my uh, my paralysis shot. Okay, roll initiative, please. <laughs> I rolled a four again. How many fours can this brown guys roll? I, your I look die at is needles and turn I it say, off and turn it back on. If he manages to wrangle this thing and tame it, what are we going to have to put up with? It takes to wing and proceeds to to fly away. Uh, now this thing's only like um, like a meter and a half long. Um, it's going first, and it is, it is speeding away. You can take a shot at it if you want. Okay, here we go. Come on, Bogo, wrangle this Bronco. <laughs> and I, I doubt that hits anything. I rolled a five. You rolled a five. Okay. Uh, your needler, what class weapon is your needler, please? Uh, that is a... Uh, well, the paralysis is a class 14, and the needler is a class 11. Yeah. Class 11 weapon. Okay. So we'll see. And you rolled a five. That's probably, I'm, I'm feeling like that's just a straight up a miss. Um, yeah. yeah it just skips off his carapace, and the thing flies out over some rubble. You can't see it anymore. Bogo, Bogo gives it a final finger in defiance. <laughs> well, did anything hear that ruckus? All right, you guys. Uh, anybody else doing anything now that you viewed this comedically? I'm Fun. jumping back in the air and flying, looking around. Okay. <laughs> nah, I'm just waiting for Bogo to get back. I walk over there, I look up to numbers, and I say, missed him by that much. Man, that was a pretty slick uh, inverted maneuver you pulled there now. So I look around, I'm monitoring just in case something decided to uh, oh. hear what was going on. Uh, nothing Nothing does. Okay. That's because of my ninja cowboy skills. <laughs> okay, it takes you guys, because you are having to, you know, manipulate this thing and, and places like you know, deadfalls that you could squeeze through and so on before you now have to route around. So it does take you a couple of hours. It is getting late in the day when you finally come back to where the vehicle is. Nothing has uh, no nothing has jumped out and attacked you. So I think we should put the fuel in the vehicle, lock ourselves in the vehicle, and be ready to take off if something decides to disrupt us but uh stay here inside this building because it's been abandoned and secure for how long so i i think we'll be a little bit better protected inside the building inside this vehicle especially but, yeah, with the windows rolled up and the doors locked yeah Okay, and the vehicle is in good shape. I mean, you numbers, you're experienced in turbine car, so you can adjust the uh, the individual environmental controls. I mean, there there's little, um, you know, it's future technology, so you can basically have like if you want it hotter than than four hundred seven seven, and then the back seat can be similarly. Oh, protected. we've got seat. Heaters in this thing, huh? <laughs> well, not just <laughs> heaters, but coolers too. 
atmospheric control, the whole nine yards. Nice. Right, so I'm going to make sure they freeze and I'm comfortable. Hey, hey, I healed you. <laughs> I had she to did. spread nice. my wings and, and, and get comfortable with my wings in here. So I'm doing shotgun. It's it, it, it really... driving, so you know the other two are in the back. If 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 you make it too cold, just keep in mind cold weather gives Bogo gas. <laughs> All weather gives Bogo gas. It escapes his mouth most of the time. I'm turning my fan on so that it goes to the back. <laughs> Okay, and by the way, folks, I want to thank, uh, we just got a couple more subs. We are up to 1551. Thank you, everyone, for spreading the positivity, spreading the joy. That is awesome. Thank you, you folks who have, who have subscribed to us on YouTube. We appreciate it. We do these streams every Friday night. Uh, we'll play something. Will we play Gamma World forever? I don't know. We may change. It's like Kyle and I were discussing earlier this evening. But we stream games three nights a week. First edition AD and D on Tuesdays. Uh, Kyle's got a classic traveler. He's currently running on Wednesdays, and right now we're doing Gamma World on Fridays. So thank you, thank you again for your subscriptions. It your support is greatly appreciated. All right, so um, we'll just go ahead and roll. Um, yeah, numbers. Th this thing, like, you haven't seen a vehicle in this good a condition since uh, the bubble car was before numbers, wasn't it? Did he ever ride in yes. that? I did not ride in the bubble car. Oh, At least yeah. I don't think You've so. Never seen a vehicle in this good a condition. You didn't know right. that uh, such a prize could go undiscovered. Well, that's excellent. Nice find. Bill Allen says it's been so much fun watching you guys. That's that's you guys, my players, play Gamble World. I have so many good memories from the old days. Thank you, Bill Allen. Thank you so very much. Uh, and I hope I hope I'm doing it right. I I, I hope I'm I'm doing honor to uh, to Gamble World fun. And uh, as I said, folks, if you're a little disappointed, there's no visual elements. It's coming. It just takes me a while to to get sci-fi terrain because we're all fantasy here. Right, so it's it's a little incongruous to say okay, the knight and the paladin, uh, that's that's Bogo and Numbers Rab, and then the I, I have a mini for for four zero seven seven, that is uh, I hope to uh, get prepared for painting this. Uh, I don't know if you guys can even see that. Um, I will show it real quick, and then we'll get back to the game. That there, and hopefully I won't accidentally switch anyone off. Come on. Uh, let's see. Tabletop. And, of course, it won't come into focus. But that's basically... Yep, we've worked out a color scheme and all. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So, um, so yeah, uh, you know, it was late afternoon. You guys, you guys settle in. Um, wow. So eight hours go by. It's it's now sometime before dawn, a few hours before dawn. And we'll see what that is. Anybody doing anything special? This this vehicle is exceptionally comfortable. For most people, for for uh, four hundred seven seven, even like with your wings spread out, uh, you know, like laying across the back, it's it's difficult. It is difficult to be comfortable. You think you're going to have difficulties in any in in any vehicle? Yeah. 
But Which hey, is a- as as long as they don't get crushed in that, I'm okay. I'm just gonna rest. Okay. Bogo is snoring like a grown man. I'm gonna tell tell our guy, you know, I'll take the first watch and I need you to take the second one and then wake somebody else up for a third and fourth. Because I need to get some sleep because I got to heal too. So, Okay, so whoever is on watch... Um, I'm taking the first. Okay, whoever whoever is on watch just before dawn, um, you can see out there, out beyond the sandy, grassy spot, which is full of uh, carnivorous grass, um, you see a group of hoop. And hoop, of course, as you know, are uh, 2.6 meter tall mutated rabbitoid creatures. They walk around on their back legs. Yeah, we've met some of these before. Yep. Um, and there look to be there look to be eight of them out there. They kind of gesture and point in your direction. Um but they don't approach you. They're they're pointing at the ground, and they seem to be aware that there's carnivorous uh, grass there. Oh, nice! Using the grass as a protection. Cool. Um, and they, uh, one of them raises a paw, and sort of waves in your direction hesitantly. They all have spears, by the way. Probably oh. wouldn't. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> Do you gesture back, flash the headlights, anything like that? No. Are we all like awake at this point? Uh, whoever is on watch in the uh, pre-dawn hours. Um, I'm sure at this point I'm probably sleeping. So. Yeah. Um, and I guess a uh, second guy uh, took the second watch, and I guess that would yep. put me or Bogo on the third yeah. one. Right. Bogo, <clears throat> are you awake and seeing the giant bunny rabbits or is it numbers rab? I think it's me. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, just because it, he had to dip for a second. Oh, okay. I missed that. Uh, all right. So, yeah. Yeah, you see the hoop out there. <clears throat> all right. I'll, I'll, I'll stick my hand. I'll roll down the window. Uh, in the driver's seat, which I assume I'm occupying, and stick my hand out and wave. Okay. Perhaps even make a gesture um, beckoning them closer. Okay. Um, the one the one that waved looks at another one of them and nods, and they make their way around the edge of the uh, of the uh, the carnivorous grass, and when they get close to the front, which the the sandy patch with the carnivorous grass and it comes like almost up to the edge of the building so if you picture like uh you know like a car dealership the the show floor will be raised off the ground by like three feet or something right yeah that's basically this so they get close enough and then they both bound over the last patch of sand that they otherwise would have had to have walked across and land next to the vehicle. All right, I'm going to step out of the. I'm going to open the door, step out of the vehicle, prop my laser rifle up against the um, up against like the door jam, um, okay. so that I can grab it easily if necessary. But I don't want to hold it right now. All right. Uh, one of them telepathically speaks to you and says, "Greetings, human." Excuse Hello me. He says. Greetings, human. What's going on out here? Good to see you. I hope you're not hostile. How are you? 
oh, we're doing just fine. We're just poking around the ruins, looking for items we can take for trade or what have you, that sort of thing. I hope we're not disturbing you. Is this your place of dwelling now? Uh, you would never be a disturbance. I am friends of the hoop. Oh, well. Well, well, well met. Uh, what what was your name, Shani? Numbers. <laughs> There's an old chain that we hoop invented. There's strength in numbers. Mm -hmm, indeed. As I said, we are just passing through, so... I hope we're not disturbing you, as I said, but uh, that appears to not be the case. What have you to trade? He says, well, uh, metal's not really any good to us. Uh, we have a few interesting articles here. Uh, let me see. He looks at the other hoop. Doesn't say anything, but the other hoop bounds out. And then the other's bound back in uh with all this noise you've all kind of woken up at this point um and yes there are eight hoop standing around so if you picture you know a little marsh hare uh which we get tons i mean <laughs> anywhere you live in the united states you're going to get hairs um but uh yeah they're uh they're all kind of regarding you uh one's very very lovingly rubbing a paw down one of the fenders of the uh, the car. Um, I'm going to step out and I'm going to like stretch and stretch my wings just to see how they react. Um, they are nonplussed. They, they, they oh, look at that. A winged mutant. Okay. Uh, and so they lay out a few things and what they have, we'll see here. What what they have for trade? A fission bomb. No, um, <laughs> you maniacs! You blew it up. Yeah, <laughs> we put it in Bogo's back 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 pocket um, of his jorts. <laughs> It's voice activated, but it'll only go off if someone talks like Yoda from Star Wars. So I think you should be safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's that cough, Safi? No more bong rips for you, young lady. Yeah. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's called allergies. Oh no, I I get it. I get it. The the wife and kids have them have them terrible. Of course, you know, down here in Florida in about four more weeks the trees are just gonna start trying to make tree babies and we all know what that means. Kill them all. Skeet 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 everywhere. A lot of berry white playing in the woods is what that means. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so they have just just some odds and ends. All right. Um, uh, he's got a um something in a in a soft container labeled high explosive if you're interested in that i'm gonna pull out a, a gold coin and um flip it over my knuckles just okay. to see if there's any uh if they have any interest in in the shiny okay um They have another gadget that they say, uh, not sure if you'd be interested in this. Uh, it's a portable music player. It appears to be working, but it is barely audible. Oh, Bogo. Amongst their stuff. 
they have a portable mm. television. <laughs> oh, you have one too. Uh, pocket portable <laughs> color TVs. Uh, do yeah. they have like a uh, fake poop? He might like that. No, no, no phony dog poop. You oh, uh, bummer. Just a minute. You dropped your phony dog poo. What phony dog poo? <laughs> Secret is 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 an underrated classic. I recommend everyone see it. So yeah, it looks like the explosive is the only thing they've got. Um, they've got a, a a crown that appears to be made of gold and is studded with jewels. I ask about the explosive thing. What is it, and how does it work? Not sure, winged lady. Uh, not really sure. What do you, what do you want for it? Hmm. Well, let's see. Do you have any food you'd want to trade? Uh, unless you count metal as food, probably not. No, we don't really eat metal, but we can turn it into rubber if you need a stew. What about gold coins? What about Domars? We, we could trade for Domars. Sure. What about the perfect bait to catch carnivorous grass? We don't want to catch the carnivorous grass. We just want to avoid it. With this bait, you could find out if there's carnivorous grass from a safe distance. I know where it's hidden. Well, we know what the carnivorous grass tufts over the surface look like. That right there is carnivorous grass. He has a point. He's offering to travel with you. All right, so let's... Uh, items. So for um, we'll just say we'll treat that. It's not really something they can use, and since they want to trade it, um, he would like uh, fifty domars or the gold equivalent. Uh, what's the gold equivalent again? Because I've got uh, ten uh, it, gold it, coins. It is ten gold coins. Is the equivalent of fifty? Uh, is the, the equivalent of fifty domars? Uh, you drive a hard bargain, Herr Folk. How? How about seven gold coins? They're in excellent shape. I assure you. I like the cut of your jib, Shunny, so that sounds like a good deal to us. I'm very well. All right. So you have uh, a, a, a pouch now of, of uh, explosives. And I'm seven gold coins lighter, which leaves me with three. Okay. All right. Bogo. Anything else anybody one. wants? Oh, I'm I'm wanting that portable TV. Uh, you've Bogo, got one. You don't need a second one. You can barely got carry the one you've got. He's got two. This will be already. Um, I'm, one I'm for each shoulder for and one for his arse. I'm I'm looking I'm, for the try try uh try folk thing. I'm gonna I'll smack take... his ear. I'm gonna smack his ear. No. No, no, no. I am not carrying you and you three are... of these things. No. No. He only responds to wet willies. So Bogo climbs out of the ear. car. I grab his ear and tug him around and I look at him. I pull his head and say, no. Bogo, what are you doing? So Bogo's still trying to climb out of the car. I've got and the, goal, the goal is to take one of the hoops by the hand, take him back to the warehouse part, and show them the marble animal head. Do I grab his ear before he does this? 
Uh, My roll initiative. is 17. Okay. okay. Um, roll, roll, uh, roll initiative, uh, both of you guys. I rolled a five. Okay. okay. I'm rolling. The, I'm rolling the red dice. Okay. And I rolled it. I rolled a three. The red dice is going in the microwave. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you can listen to it scream. Um. All right. Well, uh, g- give me a two hit roll. Bogo is this tall. I'm just and grabbing his ear and I'm holding him. You're I'm you're trying you're trying to grab him. Roll roll. Yeah. Give me a, give me a d twenty roll. Uh, that is a fourteen. That is not sufficient. <laughs> so he walks with a hoop back into the into the back of the warehouse, and uh, you can hear them communicating. Well, actually, you can't hear them communicating because he's being uh, he's not speaking. But Bogo, if he, is, if he gets another TV, he's leaving it behind because I'm not carrying it. I can't carry that yeah. much weight. He's 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 looking around at some of the odds and ends you're showing him. He's he does like the lion head, but he's like, uh, it's pretty heavy. I, I don't know that I could carry it. it. It is it is really nice though. If I ever settle down somewhere, I'd like to put it next to my burrow. What you do is with this lying head, this shows your dominance to other aggressive things. It is. It is kind of nice. And you want the you 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 want the the little the, the little square thing for that? Absolutely. And and with that shiny thing with the little shiny bobbles in it, you put that on your head with this, no one can resist you. The shiny thing with shiny baubles? Oh, the crown. The crown, right. Okay. He's like, hmm. You might have something there, little feller. All right. He uh, he he's got this thing and he hands you the, the mini TV. Outstanding. And I, w- I walk back with a smirk. And when, when uh, 4077 sees me, I just look at her and mouth, ninja skills. <laughs> I point to the trunk. That's where it's going. I'm not touching it. It's going back there. Hey, don't mess up my vehicle. <laughs> All right. Um... The hoops ask if you have anything else you'd like to trade. Uh, let me see what I've got. Of course. Mm. I am I quite mean, you happy told with us, the arrangement. They already told us what they had, so there's not really anything that I want. So, Right. Unfortunately, they don't appear to have any medical supplies or anything, at least not that they put out to trade. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask them um, in in their adventures around this area, have they come across any and I'm going to describe a liquor store and I'm going to describe medical supply store type of thing. Okay. Um, No on the liquor store. We occasionally meet traders who offer fermented juices from fruits and grains. Um, Mostly it's humans that seem to like that. Uh, Medical supplies. He said, oh, there's a tall building closer to the center of Lanta that might have what you need. It's not a trading post, though, and it could be dangerous. Okay. Uh, I ask him what direction and approximately how far. Oh, about 40,000 hops in that direction. Can I estimate what a hop is? Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 on foot, I ask it, him to hop. I ask him to hop so that uh, I can kind of extrapolate. Uh, he, he jumps forward about uh, the, the, the width of this room, which is, which is about 20 meters. 
Okay. So, being what I, my intelligence of 18, can I estimate about how far? All right, let's see. Yeah, he's he's talking about like eighty kilometers, which I think is something like thirty miles. So he could he he's probably talking about something on the outskirts of Atlanta, like on the northwest side. So if it's thirty miles, I kind of look at numbers and I say, well. With that distance and this vehicle, we could make that in a day, right? God, I think so. We just need plenty of fuel. We need to transplant all the fuel from the old vehicle into this one. Well, and carry we'll drive, what we can, otherwise. Yeah, I mean, when we get light in that, we'll drive to the old vehicle, move all the fuel into this one, use these light things, hopefully, to help stretch the distance and, and go from there. Yeah. Any extra fuel will strap down in the trunk. Yeah, definitely. Around the stupid boxes that he <laughs> keeps getting. They're, hey, they're listen. A tablet. Come on. Uh, we're throwing those away while we're driving, okay? You climb behind <laughs> the back seat and throw them out on the ground. He doesn't need that crap. I'm about tired of his uh, stuff. <laughs> oh, can you feel the love tonight, guys? All right. So um, the hoops are thankful for your trades. One of them is is uh, he, he's he's fashioned a uh, a sling out of some various scraps of items and now has the, the marble lion head, which is like the size of a football. He slung it and he, he smiles and waves his little paw at, uh, at, at Bogo and gives him a little nub up, you know, the equivalent of a thumbs. Um, and that is where we will depart with the party planning on driving back across the ruins of Atlanta, fueling up their vehicle somehow and then exploring the mysterious medical complex. So uh, first of all, I want to thank, of course, all of my wonderful players for being here tonight. I want to thank you guys for being here tonight. It has been a, it has been a crazy day of news with all the ongoings and stuff. And again, 550, uh, I'm sorry, 1,551 subs. It's, it's just awesome guys i really really appreciate it that is that is great thank you everyone who has subscribed whether you've been here from the start the start start i was looking at the the metrics on youtube the other day and it was like 2014 i got my first subscriber on the channel so if that's you if you're still with me and you're watching right now or you watch this video later from the bottom of my heart thank you if you are number 1551 from the bottom of my heart Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, we will be back on Monday. Lots of good stuff coming next week. Any news that breaks about OGL 1.1 or 2.0 or whatever the heck they're, they're doing it, I will bring to you guys. But next week, we've got uh, Tales of Tabletop Triumph, the second episode. Uh, we've got more classic D&D goodness and classic RPG goodness in general. Um, We've got our Let's Play First Edition AD&D on Tuesday. Um, we're just going to hang out on Wednesday. And because uh, Kyle, Kyle will be back in a few more weeks. And then on Friday, we'll be right back here playing some Gamma World. So you guys have an absolutely wonderful evening. Uh, Mark, you snuck in there. Didn't see you over there, bud, but greetings to you. Mark's, Mark plays our uh, closed uh, Monday night game, and it's a lot of fun to to play with him as uh, Grindel the Dwarf, his character. So again, thank you, players. Uh, we will see you all next time. 
Thank you. You guys have a good one. Peace out. Everyone stay safe. And I just got to do this here because it doesn't, I don't have an instant, uh, in, instant uh, removal button for everything that I can just push. So here we go. And uh, yeah, I will see you all. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. Have you seen my owl bear? Here's to all the weirdos everywhere in the woods and in the air. Have you seen my owl bear? Should I shave off all my hair? Bobs are all around. Some live in tunnels underground. Some are fat, some are rich, some are sleeping in a ditch. Can you ride a crooked horse without a saddle way off course? Naked as a toad, all the way to Smoky Joe's. Have you seen the little creep driving fast in his little green jeep? He smells like fish and brandy. But his rotten teeth look dandy. Take me to the show. I don't care if fast or slow. From action flicks to dancing dicks, just take me to the show.